my voice is clear enough, please. Yes, okay. Oh, too loud. Yeah, this is. Um, now, is that better? Is that okay? Yes, okay. So, uh, I'll begin and please stop me if it's too low. Okay? So, um, hi Tom and Brian and Judy and everybody. Okay, so, yes, I'm going to say a lot about blogging today. Um, now, maybe you've heard a lot on the also from the other presentations. I haven't had time to see the other ones, but I'll watch them tomorrow. Anyway, uh, the whole point of everything I will discuss today, um, the whole point of this blogging message is creativity, because um, creativity cannot exist in a vacuum. That's why I'm not just going to talk about one blog or be blogger, and I'm going to talk about the whole blogosphere and how we all influence each other and it can happen when we are all connected to each other and what we can do with that okay so creativity is a collaboration even before the internet um, if we look at famous writers from the past or artists they were always influenced by somebody else so ideas don't come in a vacuum either we are all influenced by each other and we all get our ideas from somewhere else but it's fascinating to experience this uh, on the internet and through social media and to share the process. So I'm mostly going to talk about sharing and why we share and what the whole process feels like as it develops. Okay? Um, is it still clear? Oh, uh, Susan says there's an echo. Does anyone else hear an echo? Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, Sylvia. Okay, so Sylvia. Okay. Yeah, could you lower the volume? I don't know if you can hear me, Sylvia. Could you lower the okay, volume? Okay, so I just want to know the like volume is okay. Just make it go volume. down. Some people have had to make it go down to 10. So don't be afraid um, because you're a very powerful speaker. Oh. You don't need to have that much volume. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I've turned it. Uh, okay, I've turned it down now. Okay, sorry, one sec. Um, okay, uh, Nelly, I'll be one moment. Okay, sorry, one sec. I wish I could speak Greek. Anybody else speak Greek? I just think it's a an amazing language. It's almost like Portuguese. It it kind of has. A rhythm to it. There. Okay, I'm sorry. Somebody um, just turned up on, on my doorstep. It's okay. So, okay, I'm sorry. Somebody um, just turned up on, on my doorstep. It's okay. So, okay, we are ready to go. Is the sound better now, Nelly? Yes, okay. Is it better? Yes, okay. Right. So, um, what are ecologies of talent? Well, it's when we um, write something and share it and interact with people online, then we attract other people who resonate with our ideas. And then their talents come out and we begin to share everything and this creates new things all the time. Okay? And it's one thing to discuss it and it's another thing to experience it. So I'm going to try to show you how it has um, worked for me. Okay? Now, a lot of uh, my ideas today are influenced by a book I was reading this summer and the book is called Show Your Work. So I bought this, work, I bought this book in the summer um, just to read a little bit more about social media and what we're doing with ourselves online and when I read it I realized that everything I've been doing in the past five or six years um, 
follows this whole philosophy of sharing. So I've been sharing um, a lot in the last five or six years. So like I've been sharing ideas um, on Facebook and groups, I've been sharing my blogs, the webinars, um, all kinds of things that a lot of us teachers do online is share. And we share our ideas and our materials and our lesson plans and so many things. And the question is, why are we doing this? Why do we give away so much or why do we share so much? Um, you know, people often ask you, why are you doing this? And it doesn't seem to make sense. So when I bought this book, um, Show Your Work by Austin Cleon, and you'll see it in, in the PowerPoint later, um, he described in perfect ways exactly what I've been doing all along. So I realized that there is some method in my madness and it's worth sharing and showing off again today. Okay, so when I read the book, this is what I, I felt, that sometimes you find your life written in someone else's book. Because when this writer described how he shares his work, um, the whole logic and science behind his sharing, I realized that's what I've been doing all this time. And I was influenced by other people to share so much as well in the early days. Um, like, for example, Andre Klein from Learn Not Live was a writer who shared a lot. And I read all of his books. And then in the early days on um, with IQ, I don't know if anybody here would remember, but we had an Edupunk collaboration, which was creative collaboration. And I learned more about sharing from that um, with George Maslin. So that's the beginning of a big history of my sharing. And I'm going to tell you why this sharing is important and what it can do for you. Okay? Thanks, Brian. Okay. I don't know. We should connect on Facebook because I only meet you in webinars. And it would be nice to meet also on forum. Okay. And that goes for everybody who's here. Okay. Now, so we talk about creativity uh, and collaboration. But okay. Maybe there now, are other ways. so we talk about creativity and collaboration. But why blocking? Maybe there are other ways to share and collaborate. Sorry, one moment. Okay, that's the last interrupt. Ready. Okay. So, okay, that's the last interrupt. Is a great way to share. Ready. Okay. So, to, to answer why blogging is a great way to share, uh, we just have to ask ourselves what is blogging. So, in the beginning, if you have never done it before, it's a bit like this picture. It's yourself, your ideas, and your screen. Um, you might think, oh, I'm going to write something like write a letter, but you've never yet experienced what's going to happen once you hit the publish button. But um, I decided to get some ideas from my colleagues online. So I posted a question on Facebook before this webinar to hear how other teachers will express the idea of what they think blogging is. Okay? So, uh, Theodora Papapaniotu said, it's expressing yourself in public without fear of the opinion of others. And that is a very important thing, and I would probably refer back to this opinion throughout the whole webinar. Um, yeah, you've, you've got to be brave enough at the beginning to share your thoughts and your ideas. And the only way to do that is just to follow your own instincts, believe in your own experiences and your own thoughts, what you read and what you think, 
uh, be confident enough not to care about what others think because the more you do and the more you work, the more you might meet people who want to oppose what you're saying. So you can't be sensitive. Okay? So, Nelly, what do you mean? No, I didn't you must mean be that. tired. No, no, well, you I must, be, you must I, have I been doing webinars so all day. I wanted to get people. So, to I suppose you are. I think people why blog? make what? Why, wrote, why do you think why people blog? I wrote that why twice. That's what I meant. So I was just excusing. I'm sorry for being such a. I'm in a mess there. So. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, but sorry. Okay. Oh, no, I'm it's because we did so many webinars today. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes, it would be very nice if people here could uh, write in the chat box what they think blogging is. And also. Um, can, maybe you can tell me if any of you are blockers. I know that Tom is. Oh, and I, Brian, are you a blocker as well? That's lovely. Three days ago. Okay, well, that's oh, blocking is a song of the mind longing to be heard. That's lovely. Three days ago. Okay, well, that's a start if you have that kind of definition. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I was really happy when I... Um, decided to ask other people what blogging is because I got such lovely feedback. Self-expression, yeah, that's one of my favorite um, values in life, to, that life is all about self-expression. That's lovely. Anybody else? Yeah, sometimes we just want to keep things to ourselves. You don't blog because you don't want to express all your opinions. Yeah, sometimes we just want to keep things to ourselves. That's true. It's good to blog only when you feel like it. And we can talk about that later because sometimes people feel compelled to keep on blogging to stay visible on social media. And we need to talk about um, what can be repercussions of just blogging for the sake of visibility. Uh, now, a blog is that open? Well, I think, yeah, I think it's difficult difficult to write an article if you're not completely open because then you get stuck and you get writer's block. But if you're just expressing yourself, it flows out. And I also think that when you are completely open, people respond much more. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, I mean, I think there's no point. If you're blogging um, without expressing your true self, it's just like a game and an act and you don't get tired and burnt out. So if you don't get burnt out, that's because you're being true to yourself and you don't, you don't mind sharing uh, your vulnerabilities or um, anything, even your failures with the whole world, okay? Because people want to know you're a human being, basically. Okay, oh great, Gordon, I'm so glad you came. Yeah, it just depends on how you feel. Yeah, that's another huge topic because some of us um, have routines like we have to blog once a week, for example. Um, if that's the case, we have to try to manage our feelings in that respect. If you're just doing it for yourself, um, you know you can do it just at the best times when you feel your best and you're most inspired. But we can control our inspiration by being connected with the blogosphere and by being connected with our colleagues and being happy for them when they succeed and then it comes back to us. So there are lots of things that create your feelings and I think we can manage all of it, okay? Because life is not convenient and my life is not convenient, but I found ways to keep my inspiration high just managing um, the way I look at things. So. Now, this is a lovely one from Christina Coriano Pulu. Fear is the courage that has said its prayers. Okay, so we've talked about moods, feelings, of being open or not wanting to share ourselves, right? Uh, but this whole fear is natural and very important for us. And it's all about that comfort zone thing and just doing the scary thing and then feeling how, how great it is later. So Christina says that blocking is kind of like that. You let things flow outwards. You don't know if anyone cares or wants to read it, but you do it. And you've got things to say, and maybe you'll just find an ear 
are words or a different thought to add to your own. So I think that Christina has expressed what I wanted to say in the beginning, that it's all about creativity and creativity works in collaboration. And when we write our blog, we want to find an ear or a word. We want to add something to our own. Um, actually, that's the image back here um, in the beginning. I just want to show you the image again. It's a bit slow moving back. Are you able to move the slides? Because it's yeah, you, but let me just say, you and can Ellie, open up um, the slide thumbnail are you able view, to move and then you can do whatever you want. Very slow. You do it like that, and it's much faster. Do you see what I mean? Just beside the, uh, the arrows, there's something called a slide thumbnail view. You open that up, and then you can see all your videos. You click on the one that you want, and it's fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I do a different picture that when we're blogging, we move oh. away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I do a different picture that when we're blogging, we move away from this thing on your own, that you're limited by your own perspective. And no matter how much you read, or how active you are, or how brilliant you are, you still only have your own perspectives, because you only have so many minutes in the day, um, one place where you live, and we don't, have, uh, we don't live in ten places at the same time. There's no way we can ever match what we get when we share thoughts with someone else, just one other person. And in our blogosphere, we share with hundreds of other people. So this little picture would be amplified hundreds of times with the shared thoughts and these ecologies of talent that create something that we would never, never do on our own. So that's, I, I made this image before I saw Christina's quote, and her quote spoke to me uh, so much on that level. Now, yeah, the slides are just a bit slow anyway, whichever way. So I think we were on slide five before. Okay, almost there. Okay, one more. Courage is the magic which can turn your dreams into reality. Wonderful. Okay. Um, yeah, we all have different ideas of courage. Okay. So, sharing and connecting is what Gordon had said. And that is the whole point of my webinar today, to say why sharing is important for many, many reasons and practical reasons and what connecting can be like uh, in the practical sense, okay? And you're going to see lots of examples. And Marjorie Rosenberg said, put in words, putting into words, the thoughts run in through your mind. So we do have thoughts running through our mind. And it's, very, it's, it's great to type them out and find something expressed that you would not have expected from yourself and especially when other people respond to those, as I'm responding to your thoughts that are coming out here. Now, so if we know what a blog is, what is blogosphere? Okay, so there is a famous quote um, that says, a teacher takes a student to the threshold of his own mind. So where you are so inspired that you come to the edge of your own knowledge and then you just take a leap of faith into a new realm of creativity, okay, or your aha moments are something completely new. So I just changed that to the networked mind because it's not just about your mind, it's by connecting with all of the great minds out there through their blogs, their stories, we have this big connection and your, your mind is not alone anymore, okay, so it's something that it's something new for us that we didn't have before the internet because it's much faster and much more spontaneous and interactive. The whole idea of sharing here is now on the practical level. Uh, the whole idea of sharing here is not just okay. I'm going to give away everything I have. Okay. It is that I am going to work very, very, very hard, and I'm going to create very special things for myself, for my work, or for my business, for my success and for my financial success. 
but I don't have to lock up all my work. I can share the process of my work. Okay, so that's what I, I always did instinctively. If I was um, writing a story or making a PowerPoint or thinking of something new, I always share some quotes on the internet or pictures or some of my slides before I do my webinar. Um, as you show the process of your work, you're not giving away every, you're not giving away yourself, you're not, you're not giving away your new publication, but you're giving away how you work, you're giving away how hard you work, people are watching how you evolve, and then anybody who is influential in your field, who is looking out for people or headhunting, they, they're going to notice you straight away. Okay, so that's what I love about this. This is a quote from the book. Imagine if your next boss didn't have to read your resume because he's already read your blog, right? Now, some of us who've been blogging for a few years find that uh, people connect with us from all, all different places and sometimes they're influential people. And we didn't have to knock on their doors or send resumes, okay? They just know who we are from the blogosphere and for me that I had lots of, lots of doors opened. It's like everywhere is open. And I remember I remember uh, like when I graduated from university and um, those days when you're looking for your first job and you're too young to have experience um, and it's hard to get an interview and when you have an interview they, they ask you where's your experience even though you're only they know you're only twenty one years old and you look like a teenager. And they give you this hard line about your experience. And what I've seen today is that I've seen um, master's degree students and PhD students who are blogging online and they're sharing their dissertation ideas online. And I've seen other uh, master's degree students who are studying information technology and e-learning who are organizing huge uh, networks and they're organizing seminars and they're connecting with leaders in our field while they're still in university. And when they leave university, nobody's going to ask them, where's your experience? You know, who are you? Everybody will know who they are. And when I started working online and sharing all of my stuff, instead of going back to those old days of knocking on doors and, and putting on your suit and trying to uh, talk to a panel of interviewers simply they're knocking on our doors okay so this is actually very very true and this is a very important reason why i don't think anything can match blogging because when you blog and as we said before you are very very open people leaders in the field are people looking out for talent or headhunters or recruiters they can see more than your skills they can also see what kind of personality you have and uh, these days, soft skills, psychology, and personality open more doors than anything else. Okay, so I hope that today's um, university students and school children learn this optimistic side of life beyond education because we had to do it the hard way before we had these opportunities. So, yeah, the freedom of being online is that we tend to take on too many jobs and we bite off more than we can chew. That's true. Anyway, um, so blogging is sharing. Um, so one reason why blogging is good, I said, is because uh, we show who we are to the whole world and to the recruiters, to the leaders in our field, to influential people. And, and people we just want to have around us for inspiration and for fun. Okay, now these are four principles that I worked out for myself and which I found reflected in the book I read. Uh, when we blog, we attract. So we attract attention from important people, as I said before, but we attract attention from like minded people. So if you don't blog, you don't know how many other people are thinking as you are, are searching for the same things that you are searching for, are experimenting with the same things you're experimenting with. This is extremely important to validate your work and to keep you fresh and to keep you inspired and to manage those moods we were talking about before. I think you don't 
you don't get into negative moods when you have people to uplift to who understand you. Okay? And we've already mentioned this part attracting who's in your field. Now, support. Uh, the important thing here is that when you share, you want to support other people. Okay? So, a big problem with the internet and blogging is that if we think we, we're we going to post some links and then demand some attention, then um, it's like spamming ourselves because we're just going to get really disappointed when we don't get the results we want. So, um, what, what I always had from the beginning was a big curiosity about how other people operate, how they think, and how they create. And I was curious about my colleagues or people I was meeting online, I was fascinated with their work. So I really started off by following other people and connecting my ideas with their ideas, reading their books, and then um, talking about them, writing a, a review, interviewing somebody. And what I was doing was thinking beyond myself because I was so curious about what was out there and about the people out there. And by doing that, I was, being, I was able to create a high-quality personal learning network. Because I was able to give something to those people as an equal who understands their work rather than as a fan or someone, you know, who's just adding up numbers but there's no true connection, okay? So, and as you do that, and nurture, you nurture someone else's creativity, it just, it's reciprocal in the end and natural. So, I just found that my personal learning networks um, were very genuine and very strong and anything I ever gave to someone because I was really fascinated by their work I always got back uh, in a genuine way not in the false kinds of ways of uh, old-fashioned networking where people just try to give or take it's it's just purely spontaneous and this is true sharing that's the only way you build up a proper network so you've got to develop a passion for your work to the extent that you can admire someone else's work as much as you can obsess your own work. And when you know that the blogosphere is so compelling, and when you know that creativity is a collaboration, then your ego will not make you stay stuck on your own work and close your eyes to other people's work. Okay? So this idea of personal learning network it's a completely authentic, genuine thing, and you will never have a real network if you don't truly appreciate the people who you want to work with or associate with. So attracting and supporting, these are, are huge, huge uh, aspects of sharing, and sharing is so important, we cannot overemphasize that, okay? So, and now, about showing, if we want to think about old mindsets again, some people are afraid to show off all their work because they think someone will steal their ideas, right? And then other people look at bloggers or writers or um, prolific people who are always everywhere online or in webinars or all the seminars that happen. And they think, oh, that person uh, is so confident, that person knows more than me, that person is a genius, that person does everything. Um, they put you up on the pedestal and they will never try it themselves. But uh, that's completely untrue. And the lone genius myth is from my book here. So a lot of the um, expressions here come from the book. Um, so nobody is a genius on their own. Okay, so all the artists had their own networks and writers from their Renaissance times. They, they were all together. When you read about their lives, you see how they influenced each other. So, if the more you show your work, the more you can be a genius, because the more you share with the supportive network, the better and richer and more inspired your work will be. And genius is inspiration. And inspiration is from collaboration and the network. So, we, are, we're not, we should give up on this idea of being alone. It's all wrong and it doesn't exist. It's a misconception. Okay? Now, healthy seniors. See this book, um, a new word coined by Austin Cleon in this book. Um, so the see this is like uh, the group concept of genius, that you're part of a scene. Okay, so in this scene, 
one person might be a good singer, one might be a good poet, one might be a good writer, one might be a good artist. And when you put those four together, then you have a huge creation. Like how they make movies or how Walt Disney works. There are so many different uh, geniuses behind one production. Okay? So this is the whole idea of the ecologies of talent. Okay? How we all work together within the whole system of the blogosphere. Okay? So you join your seniors. For us, that's the personal learning network. Okay? So you can find your personal learning network here on Miss IQ in these webinars on Facebook or Twitter, on our blogs, by following our blogs and by commenting on the blogs, and by starting your own blog, that's, that's how you join the whole thing. Yes. And so also, the last words here are going back to the old-fashioned concept of collaboration that still exists today. So in the past, you'd have the artist, the curator, the master and the apprentice, the expert and the master. But now we are all equalized. We, we are all of these things on our own and we give a bit of everything, but we all specialize to and share. So the sharing of the network is the most important thing and that's why blogging is... Uh, it's one of these things we could write about forever and it's a huge experience when you start your first blog. Um, now, I know some people here said they are blogging already. Um, I think Svetlana said for three days, so that's amazing. Yes. Uh, Svetlana, you must have been inspired uh, by something online to start three days ago. Yes, very, very good expression, the enabling environment. Svetlana, what inspired you to start your blog? Oh, the XDI, oh great, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm always inspired by the webinars. Okay, yeah, I mean, we've had so many now. So I hope, oh, by the way, Svetlana, uh, if you want to write a guest article for Ms. IQ, um, we have a series for anybody who joined any of the MOOC staff, they can write a guest article for Ms. IQ, okay? And I, I'd love more people here, well, I hope you're all interested in blogging if you're in this webinar, so I hope more people will start their blogs, and we'll talk more about that soon. Okay, now, um, what I noticed is that despite all the positive things I've said about blogging, there are people uh, from more traditional backgrounds or more uh, academic backgrounds who, or you see some people who are too prolific or too everywhere and they complain about self-promotion. Um, some people think that all of this blogging and stuff is just a bit of self-promotion or uh, being uh, too much about yourself and showing off and it's empty. So I want to talk about what is real and what is empty and what is self-promotion. So Austin Clay wrote his whole book just to show us another way beyond self-promotion because he said he hates self-promotion and he wanted to show how we can share our work in a very positive way a necessary way for the good of everybody um, to take away this whole uh, negative concept completely. Okay, so we want to get rid of that. Now, so the negative thing is if you don't know how to deal with social networks whatsoever and you have no concept of appreciating your colleagues and you don't know much about networking or the etiquette around that or the passion for your work, you might end up doing some of these things. Spamming networks, which is where you go online and you want the whole world to look at you, so you put your links everywhere, but you don't uh, contact or resonate with anyone or appreciate anyone else who's there. And you contribute to cyber noise just by posting irrelevant things. And you come across people who don't like anyone to share anything about themselves. So even if you are a very good networker or a good sharer, some people will still call you a self-promoter because there are people who don't have blogs. Uh, maybe there are people uh, who it takes six months to write an academic paper and another six months to get approval from peer-to-peer -peer reviews in universities. So people who've lived like that throughout their whole careers, 
cannot understand spontaneous blogging and it's the old school versus this whole new world we have so that's the negative side okay now the alternative to this negative side is that you realize your work is a process you're only sharing the process and highlights of your work um, for the sake of helping other people but not spamming other people and you will only share something valuable okay you have to be a good judge by listening to people online reading what people online have to say following their work and then knowing if your work is worth sharing or not okay now if you are a very active and experienced professional who reads a lot has been teaching for years who writes a lot and who knows a lot and has a lot to share you know you have value so sometimes you'll know when you don't have to listen to old school ideologies okay or people who represent old school ideologies okay now so the best way forward is that we are always learning we are always committed to our learning and we are big enough to learn in public so if we write something on the blog we're not saying we are geniuses we're not saying that we have been reviewed by peers and um, we're not saying that you know we deserve um, 10 more PhDs because we wrote the blog we are saying that we are sharing and we are professionals but we are brave enough to learn in public and people learn through this attitude and that's what attracts the positive inspiration and building of the network okay and as Steve Martin says uh, you avoid self-promotion just by being so good that they can't ignore you okay so if I Steve Martin is the famous comedian he's a very famous comedian okay uh, so the point is that you don't need to forcefully self-promote yourself because you will attract the right people by loving your work and doing your best uh, well I don't think humor is ever old school <laughs> it's not about being old sometimes old is young school and sometimes sometimes young is old school it's your attitude okay now this part it's, it's okay to be amateur so in a lot of ways for me blogging is a denial of the old school academic network that tries to stop people from writing and publishing just because they have to uh, go through many hoops to do their publishing okay and the superior thing about amateurs is that amateurs are still in love with their work and when you're still in love with your work you're going to keep experimenting okay you're going to keep trying things and you won't be afraid to make mistakes you won't be afraid to look wrong in public okay now when I'm talking about old school attitudes I'm, I'm not talking about people with PhDs I'm talking about people who are not open to experimenting or to sharing or to publishing and that doesn't matter whether you're old or young or whether you have a PhD or you don't have okay it's all about attitude right so how, how do we go from being one single vlogger to suddenly knowing everybody in your network and everybody in your field there are many 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 ways I've just listed five ways here of course the, the important one is social media as your base for sharing if you know how to understand people online okay um, but ways you can connect with people are by interviewing them now these are all things I did naturally because I was very curious and interested in other people in my field I didn't know it was a good system and I don't think anyone should try to follow the system they should follow their instincts but uh, there were a lot of people who I learned from in the very beginning and still who I learned from and when I'm really interested in their work I, I offer to interview them so um, you'll see some interviews in a minute okay um, also I've written some reviews of books or reviews of uh, Harvard webinars for example because um, I can't I'm someone who, who can't travel around to seminars because I have small children and I just 
I volunteered to do lots of um, reports and reviews for Harrogate as a blogger, so I could still feel connected and watch the live streaming videos. So there are all these ways we can connect. Okay? Um, I have I've written guest blogs for lots of different uh, blogs, and now I'm with a Q here inviting guest bloggers too. So that's something new to expand our with IQ network and make it more exciting and make with IQ more exciting because it's it's the people and teachers who use with IQ and it's all our collaboration that makes it makes it more exciting and that's why I wanted to invite more guests. Okay? And inspired exchanges, all of these things create um, a blog on fire that we're going to talk about later. Nelly, I don't go to the conference because I don't leave, I can't leave my children. That's why. Okay. Um, now, so social media and connected minds. So before this webinar, um, I asked my colleagues for their opinions about blogging, which I showed you before. This is just a picture. This is a picture to show you how you can use Facebook to um, get opinions from your colleagues, and sometimes their ideas can be your next article or your next webinar or a, a new way to get closer to these people. It could be your next interview. You might interview one of these people. Okay? I had a previous Facebook uh, conversation with one of our guest bloggers and I don't have it here but um, she shared an idea with me and I was so inspired I invited her to write an article on this IQ. And you'll see that in a moment. And by the way, um, I'm going to add lots of links to SlideShare later on, so I, I hope you have me on SlideShare or I'll put the link soon. Now, social media has two sides, like I showed before, good and bad, okay? Right, and we can have blogs on fire where all kinds of things are happening, good and bad, but everybody's excited and things are exploding for lots of reasons. Sometimes on social media we get into big disagreements with people. Now, uh, that's, I don't recommend that because you waste time fighting with people and you might look unprofessional, but if it's a, a serious, intelligent discussion, it's good to not to wrap your own mind up in uh, everything you think it's right. It's good to expose yourself to different opinions because some of these heated discussions can be your newest inspiration. Okay? And controversy can become your newest inspiration. Our controversial colleagues who don't agree with you can be the ones who will open up your mind because uh, you need to be challenged. You need to be challenged to um, revisit your old ideas and develop your ideas. Okay? And cognitive dissonance is when we see things we just cannot believe and we just cannot accept. But sometimes we're forced to look at our own limitations and our own faults. So again, it's good to be open to the controversy and open to people who question stuff that you believe in and to rethink everything, okay? Now, so the, the positive side of blocks on fire is when you get to a stage where you are communicating with your colleagues, writing on each other's blogs, um, in touch on Facebook, sharing videos, and you want to get to a new level. Okay, so that happened to me uh, with Edgepunk when we were doing our free creativity webinars, and it happened with Jason uh, when we used to communicate a lot on Facebook, and then I invited I wrote a review of his book and I interviewed him and I invited him onto his IQ and we're still working together today and that's that's inspiration on fire from the blogs, okay? So when when you have colleagues who you work with so well together, you're going to go down to your blog and start uh, doing shows, webinars. Uh, we, I wrote books with people based on our common interests. Okay, so you, you're going to get to a stage where your network is going to have certain people who become that ecology of talent that you've got to work with and something will be produced. You just work together and it's just spontaneous. Okay? Okay, so these are examples of interviews. 
Right now, I interviewed all of these people because I love their work. And there's no other reason. So my first, uh, I interviewed uh, Jason when I met him in 2011. And I think I was the first person to interview him. Okay, so that was three years ago. Um, when we first met on Facebook. But before Facebook, I, I was always using his uh, rap videos with my students. So when I met him, it was funny. Uh, Andre Klein, he was the one who helped me to set up my first blog and website, and he's still writing today. Uh, this is Rich O'Connell, someone uh, very famous in the British Council. He's a, a very uh, creative and funny and really great person. Okay, um, anyway, you know this is Shelley Terrell, this is um, Bill Zimmerman from a comic website, Vicky Hollett and Nick Peachy. Uh, this is uh, colleagues Drew Badger and Mal. All of these people have appeared on Miss IQ. So, well, most of them have appeared on Miss IQ. Okay, this is to show you that um, when I started, I didn't know anybody. Okay, um, the first person on this page that I knew was Andre Klein. And he was already a writer before I started teaching online. Okay, and um, I just, I read, I read their work, I followed their work, I connected with them on Facebook, and we just, uh, I just interviewed them, and then you, that's how you get connected with people, okay? How to do it? Um, how to write, uh, Susan, do you mean how to write an interview or how to connect with people? Uh, okay, I told the story different times, okay, we'll start with Nick Peachy. Um, I spent two years reading his blog before I had a Facebook account when my children were babies and I just learned from his blog and when I joined Facebook uh, I asked him if I could share his links in my group and then um, then one, one day I said you know I've learned I sent him a message and told him that everything I know I learned from his blog for two years and I just wanted to interview him you know as a token of appreciation for everything I learned. Um, so I've interviewed him a few times and I'm reviewing his new book. Um, but no matter how important people are, you know, every writer needs a reader, every teacher needs a student. So these people appreciate it, okay? And um, when people appreciate how much you value their work, that's how you do your interview and that's how you connect with these people. Okay, so another way is that these are blogging exchanges. This means that you uh, have conversations with people on YouTube, okay? And when you have conversations with people on YouTube, then you can put it on your blog and it becomes a blog. Right, so I recently interviewed Theodora here. She's a teacher in Greece. And I interviewed her because she has a method where she combines teaching languages with uh, fitness. It's a bit like Fluency MC, except it's more uh, gymnastics fitness instead of rap music. And uh, she works with her fitness coach, so I, inter I interviewed both of these people recently. And this was the first time I ever met Shelley, because I work worked with her on the Edge Goals. And the Edge Goals is a big blogging network where we all, as teachers, we all set goals and work on our goals together. And then Shelley, uh, interviewed us. So we were all writing our goals, sharing our articles with each other, supporting each other, and then Shelley would speak to us. So that was my first time to meet her. And this is the whole practical uh, experience of what I introduced in the very beginning. Okay? And uh, these two pictures were from the first uh, uh, the first ELT MOOC with Jason. And Nelly was with me on this. Uh, we did, we made a collaborative video together about 10 teachers and we were playing Jason's rap music and we all had to do a little dance and thing. It was called the lip, lip Dog and we created a huge interactive video with all of these teachers from different parts of the world singing to Jason's rap music and that was um, an entertainment feature for the ELT MOOC. And this is an example of how uh, when you meet the right people, it's so much fun and so much inspiration and how it takes off. And fun is the most important aspect of the work because that's what will keep your whole network and your MOOC, your Map of Open Online course alive. So that's just a very nice memory.
Yeah, Nelly, yes, Nelly was rafting, we were all rafting. I wasn't exact, exactly rafting, I was just uh, twirling around or something. Now, this is George Martin, the first person I worked with on the Edge of Punk, a brilliant person, um, very creative and very funny. Uh, this is an interview I did with Andrew Klein. So anyway, these are all video interviews. So you can just ask to meet a colleague. I just asked to meet Theodora, okay? And we just had a chat about her work. So um, it's just very, very natural these days to do that, okay? Just find some colleagues you have something in common with and meet them online and then post your video on your blog, okay? Now, these are examples of the guest blog. So this was a recent one. So this guest blog is for technology and innovation. Okay, and um, this is Dimitri Primalit. So Dimitri has been a leader uh, in English teaching in Greece for many years. And, you know, the organizer of Tess on Greece and many other things. And he travels around the world also teaching at seminars. Okay, so... Um, he was very happy to write an article for us recently, and it was a really excellent article. Okay, so this is an example. Now, he connected with me because of my blog. Okay, so he was actually reading my blog. So, uh, once you love your work and share it, you don't know who's going to be reading it. Okay, and then one connection leads to another. No, that's no comedy for LT is coming up soon. Uh, that was Dimitri Primali. Svetlant, you're thinking of someone else. I I'll tell you in a moment when you see him. Now, uh, guest blogs inspired exchanges and psychology one. Well, one of the most popular uh, articles they ever wrote was this one called Why Do Teachers Teach? And I think it was the most popular because it was really written by a hundred other teachers. Because I posted a question on Facebook asking why do teachers teach and I put this question in five Facebook groups and one LinkedIn group and I got about a hundred answers and these hours are leading to each group and uh, when you see the, it's on the big presentation you see the link later in each group we have a list of names of people's quotes saying why they taught okay the, what was the most common answer I think the most common answer was because uh, it was in their heart to teach. It was something that they felt. They felt they couldn't live without teaching. It's a way of life. I think that was the most common answer. Anyway, um, uh, Fabiana Casella wrote, I teach to touch the present and the future. So we had so many beautiful uh, answers from people like that. Um, I will put the article as a link on SlideShare with this presentation because it's an example of an article that everybody could respond to and it's because I wasn't writing about myself, I was writing about teachers everywhere and they were writing to me about teachers everywhere and that's a perfect example that creativity is collaboration and that you're your whole network grows when you're interested in the others and not in yourself, okay? Okay, so I'm going to extend the time. Okay, Svetlana, this is comedy ELC. I'm not sure so, we're back, uh, back. Oh, sorry, I'm going to extend the time, if, if that's okay. Right, so this is another guest blog, Exchange in Psychology 2, okay? So, um, on the previous page, I showed you that about 100 teachers responded to, uh, to my question, why do teachers teach? And then I got a long letter from uh, Nick Michalowiciaki. Uh, after I wrote that article, he sent me a long letter um, with completely different perspectives, disagreeing with nearly everything I said. Uh, because he's not only a comedy ELT person, he's a psychology uh, well, I can't. I won't say expert, but he's read hundreds of books on psychology. Um, he has specialised in teaching English through psychological perspectives. So anyway, he wrote me this big letter with uh, lots of reasons to disagree with what I said. Um, I'm just really impressed that my article made someone sit down and write a letter disagreeing with all my points. So I invited him to 
put his uh, points on a guest blog. Okay, so you can see where it's written here. We have a guest blog. Okay, so uh, that was funny. And I have a link to his new blog, you can see it there. He published a new blog a few days ago after about five years of not wanting to be a blogger. So in the end, he gave in and now he's a blogger. Okay. Now, here we go. Now, uh, when I was thinking about the way people respond to your articles, and that you can have a very deep exchange with someone just because of something you wrote. And you write one article and someone else writes you another article and then you write another article back to respond to them. It made me think um, that we spend most of our time on Facebook uh, not really not really communicating deeply with people. So this question came into my mind. Oh, one minute. Okay. So. Uh, is social media killing the blogosphere with kindness? And that was because on social media we share our work everywhere, but we keep commenting on Facebook and we don't comment on the blogs. So I decided that this year I'm going to spend more time visiting people's blogs and 